All right, let's see here. Cool. All right, everybody. Hope everybody's ready to get started. If you're listening and watching, help me out. This is my first time to use this platform, but I really, I've heard it's amazing and I think it's gonna work a lot better than any Zoom. I think it's easier to get on as well. Um, so I'm Dr. Kyle Loveless, good to see you all. And if you can hear me, give me some help and tell me in the chats, give me a hello, a high five or something like that. And I'll let everybody kind of get on here and get moving. Hey, Miss Karen, there we go, Charlene, cool. Thank you guys, awesome. Howdy, Shane, love it. Hey, Carol, or Gary, sorry. Cool, Ed, what's up, man? All right, good, good, good. All right, so I'm gonna share the PowerPoint as everybody is jumping on. Hey, Nicole, Hannah, awesome. Cool, okay. Good, okay, let's see slide all right one last thing to help me out have you can you see this everybody see this pretty good high five sweet this thing's working love it okay all right so we have uh we have uh, people on today from uh, some uh, many of you are patients in the office in our in our at queen city health center and some of you are not and so i'm just going to for those of you that uh, don't know me, I'm going to start out with a, uh, an introduction, just to kind of tell you a little bit about um, who we are, Queen City Health Center, and uh, myself as well. But I won't spend too much time on me because I know you're here to, uh, to learn uh, about the thyroid and understanding it um, for your own health and for your family's health. So uh, I'm, again, I'm Dr. Kyle Loveless, and I'm ultimately a wellness expert. And uh, we have two clinics, my wife and I, Dr. Holly, in the Charlotte area, one in Matthews and one in South Park, uh, and in Queen City Health Center. And we've been uh, in the Matthews and Charlotte area since 2009. And uh, it's been awesome. We've been able to help a ton of people. This last probably three or four years, we've really shifted into uh, taking things to the next level with a lot of testing and a lot of other wellness options other uh, than along with our chiropractic care that we do in the clinic. So uh, the things we're going to talk about tonight will be very counterintuitive, It'll be a lot different than, um, than many of you have heard before, and it's going to be a whole new perspective, and you know I'm always good for that, and I always love doing that. So uh, as we're coming along, feel free to chat and comment. I'll do my best. I probably won't look over there too much, because um, there's a lot to get through tonight, and um, yeah, yeah. And so I've been in practice now for 10 years, and um, just had the opportunity help people help so many people with thyroid issues and just so much more so uh, enough too much about me other than here is my awesome family and we have a baby on the way many of you know we have a baby being born here in the next week or two it could be tonight for all we know if, if i if i'd grab my phone and run out the door in the middle of this thing sorry uh there's a baby being born so no i don't think that will happen but uh, this is uh, dr holly and my two uh, beautiful little girls uh, eleanor and isabel and yeah that's it. So let's let's dive into this thing and truly understanding uh, the thyroid. And, and the one thing I want to say up front is that whether uh, it's a medical doctor you're speaking to, whether it's a, a natural doctor, like a chiropractor or a naturopath, uh, whoever it is, is that we're really not taught very much about this stuff in school. We're given the, you know, kind of the basic physiology, the basic anatomy, uh, the medical community is really taught, hey, these are the numbers you want to check and these are the medications you give for that. And that's it. And in the natural world, we're kind of say, here's the numbers you want to check. Here's the supplements you give for it. And there's really no really in-depth investigation. And so I spent the last really five, six years just really studying uh, more in depth on, on natural medicine and functional medicine, and understanding how the human body more in depth works and really building an understanding and a philosophy that I know more than anything that our body is made to heal itself. It doesn't need help healing. It just really needs no interference. And so tonight is about teaching you what is happening in their body if you have a thyroid issue and um, how do you figure out what where that interference is coming from, okay? So I'm gonna make a couple of assumptions as we're getting started tonight. Number one, that is if you're listening tonight, you either know you have a thyroid issue or one of your family members does. You've had uh, you know a doctor tell you that and you're taking something for it, you're doing something for it, or you might be feeling the symptoms of, a, of what, you, what you believe is a thyroid issue, meaning uh, maybe it's fatigue, maybe it's digestive issues, maybe it's sleep problems, uh, maybe it's weight gain or even weight loss if it's a, um, the opposite direction with the thyroid. 
and, and whatever that is, it may be hair loss, it might be dry skin. And so if you're on this right now, I'm assuming that that's kind of you, you're in one of those positions. And so what I'm going to go through tonight is not necessarily just how you get rid of the symptoms, but how do you truly understand the thyroid? And this is it. What will you get out of um, by the end of tonight? So I'm hoping you will stay through the whole uh, webinar. Hope to keep you excited throughout it. But um, really, the first step is understanding the thyroid. You know, how do you just understanding what the thyroid actually is? I think it's so crazy that, you know, we go to the doctors and they, they we, the thyroid has become like such a big term. But we really don't understand it and know how the body's uh, meant to how it's meant to work in our body and for our body. Uh, second, we're going to get proper evaluation and testing of the thyroid. So many, and, and third, the majority of patients have uh, thyroid labs that are incomplete, very, very incomplete. And I'm going to talk about why they're incomplete and what needs to really be looked at at a bigger level. Uh, the root cause of thyroid issues, and then finally taking action on that. As we go through here, I'm going to give you some call to actions. Um, for you to be able to uh, look more in depth and, and work more in depth with this as well. So, all right, thyroid physiology. Raise your hand if you're excited to learn about the thyroid physiology. And, and as we go through this, I'm going to take you on a little bit of anatomy and a little bit of physiology uh, crash course here, because if you've ever listened to me, you know my major thing is that I want you to become your own health expert. I think in the world we live in today, you really have to become your own health expert. Uh, there's just too many things out there. So understanding your body is very important. So the thyroid physiology. All right. So it's it's ultimately set up. It's really a cool organ. Uh, it, it's, you know, it, it's, it's this kind of like horseshoe looking thing right around the lower part of your throat and uh, right in that kind of area right, right in here. And it's, uh, it's a bunch of cells that actually will take iodine, take tyrosine, and they'll form different hormones that help do things in our body. They help from everything from our metabolism, from breathing to our heart rate, right? They start with, with heart health is very important. One of the things we'll see with someone with thyroid issues is high CRP levels, which is an inflammatory response. And we'll talk more about that. Cholesterol levels. I've had so many patients with high cholesterol and they go ahead and, and they've actually had studies on this with high cholesterol that it's directly correlated to thyroid issues. Uh, central and per peripheral nervous system. It helps run the nervous system, speaks to it. And again, it produces hormones. And hormones are simply transport systems throughout the body that tell your body what to do, okay? Your body weight, right? whether it's too much weight or not enough weight, uh, muscle strength, it affects the menstrual cycle. And a lot of people don't realize how, how connected it is to estrogens and other hormones. Body temperature. So if you're someone, uh, one of the tests that we can do very easily to tell if you have a hypo or slow thyroid, is check, checking your body temperature every morning. Do that for five days. And if it's below the 98.7 regularly, it tells you that your thyroid is sluggish and having trouble keeping up. And if it's lower, it means the rest of these areas that you see there are also being affected if the thyroid is slow or, or sluggish, okay? Digestion, that's a big one. A lot of people don't realize that how important the thyroid is to digestion and digestion is to the thyroid. Your bone health, calcitonin produced from your parathyroid right around the thyroid is, uh, is very important as well. And that a lot of times the uh, osteoarthrit osteoporosis will literally come from thyroid issues. And this one's big, development and IQ for our kids. They've shown that women that have thyroid issues as they're pregnant, whether it's low TSH, high TSH levels, that actually it'll affect the development of the brain and that children um, from women with thyroid issues while they're pregnant actually have um, a lower IQ, have shown to have a lower IQ, and that can happen. It's, it's sad. And then finally, the immune system, okay? So it's pretty cool because we just think thyroid and we think metabolism, right? We think it's, it's about weight gain or weight loss, but there's so much more to the thyroid and really understanding it is big. So that's number one. Okay, how does the thyroid work? Number two, let's look at the main ups and downs, okay? So the main diseases, I guess you can call them, that we get with our thyroid. So hypothyroid symptoms. These are the things that if your thyroid is sluggish, many times you'll see these symptoms. Some of you are experiencing them regularly. You might have one, you might have multiple. And when you look through these symptoms, I think you're going to see this, that they're actually symptoms that can be caused by a lot of different things. And that's why it's pretty difficult to say just by your symptoms, we have a thyroid issue. But you can see here, it's trouble sleeping, tiredness, fatigue, uh, depression, constipation, very common with thyroid issue with um, hypothyroidism. Uh, frequent and heavy periods. Okay, so a lot of times uh, women that have menstrual cycle issues that are either very heavy or even that they've lost their menstrual cycle 
it really actually goes back to estrogen and also thyroid issues, joint and muscle pain, and then uh, and sensitivity to cold. So it's not just that you're cold all the time, it's that you're actually having a thyroid issue. Okay, so the joint pains as well. Now hyper, and I'm going to kind of quick through this beginning part, guys, so bear with me, but I, I really want to get to the stuff that's going to kind of be like, wow, you know, a lot of this stuff you might already know if you've ever investigated the thyroid, but I think it's important to know. So hyper is kind of the opposite. It's trouble sleeping in terms of you just can't fall asleep because you're so wired, right? Restlessness, this rapid heartbeat, a lot of anxiety, a lot of irritability comes along with this, uh, sweating a lot, tremors loose stools, and it can go back and forth really with loose, loose stools to constipation with this, weight loss, and then weakness, thin skin, and hair, and heat intolerance. Okay, so they're kind of the opposite scale. One is your thyroid is too overactive with hyper, and one is your thyroid is less overactive, or, or I'm sorry, less active uh, with hypo. All right, now does this sound familiar? If you're someone that has been to the doctor, for thyroid issues, maybe you're taking a medication for it, or maybe you just went and you, they tested this. They tested the TSH levels. That is your thyroid stimulating hormone. That is kind of the gold standard in the medical community uh, to test, and that is thyroid stimulating hormone. And that was normal, and so the doctor said, "You're fine. It's not your thyroid. Let's let's move on. That's not just it." And, and I've had um, typically women with with hypothyroid, but men get it as well, um, and they come in and, and their doctor just tells them it's all in their head. And, and some of you list right now, they they told you it's all in your head or they've given you medications to stabilize your TSH levels and now they're fine, but you're still exhausted all the time. And we're gonna talk about why that is, it's actually very clear. And, uh, and so the key is, is that they just kind of medicate the thing instead of saying, okay, what's actually affecting the thyroid? And more importantly, if your TSH levels are off, but you still have all these symptoms, there's got to be something else going on. And that's what leads us to what is TSH. Okay. So I'm going to go through here as we go through here, what these different things that the thyroid produces and why the testing is so um, minuscule in the medical world. Now, why do they test TSH primarily? Well, one of the reasons is because is it's the main thing that they can medicate for. Okay. And if you've been to the doctor before, I know we have a lot of patients that come in that have an autoimmune disease that's affecting the thyroid, or maybe they just have uh, just, you know, hypothyroidism for whatever reason, maybe they don't know why they have it, but they're told it's always going to be that way. And you're going to have to live on this medication. There's really nothing you can do. They've tested their TSH levels and ultimately they're taking Synthroid, Libothyroxine, maybe Armour Thyroid, uh, but the, the reality is, is that's the rest of their life kind of thing that they're looking at. So TSH is actually not a thyroid hormone. Let me just say that again. The TSH levels, thyroid stimulating hormone, is not a thyroid hormone. It's not produced by your thyroid. It's actually produced in your brain. Okay, so your, your pituitary gland, which we're going to talk about here in a second, your anterior pituitary, actually produces TSH. Okay, it's a very general overview of your thyroid function. They're ultimately saying if it's low, it's because you're, uh, you, you might have too high of T4 levels. And if it's high, then you have too much and we need to bring TSH down. If TSH gets normal, then you're good. The ideal range, our, our, my ideal range, what, what we've kind of realized is, is best, is about 0.5 to 2. Now, you're, I've seen levels all the way up from uh, 0.1 to 5 on certain lab uh, areas. And the way they make these ranges, it's kind of crazy, but the way they make the ranges here is actually not, um, it's actually not just based on what's the best healthiest. It's the averages that they see on a regular basis of people that come in with getting their testing, whether they have a, a, a no thyroid at all, or whether they had a, you know, a completely healthy thyroid, they take that average. And then that's what they use as these numbers. So we don't want to compare them to, you know, somebody that's sick. We want to say, okay, what's best for optimal functioning of the body? And that's going to be that 0.5 to 2 of TSH. And it can, t it can tend to increase um, as the body heals. So TSH H levels, as we're helping someone and they're getting better and they're seeing symptom changes and their other hormones are changing, TSH levels might actually go up. And it's hard because the patient will look at that and say, wait a second, that's not a good thing. But it's just the body adapting. And I, I really consider uh, thyroid or TSH, TSH as the cholesterol of the thyroid. Now, some of you, as you're listening, you're like, wait, cholesterol, that's, we don't want high cholesterol. That's a bad thing. 
But the truth is, is that cholesterol is an essential part of our health. And when somebody comes to me with a high cholesterol test, and I say in parentheses, because it, it ultimately what it tells me is that their body is fighting something and in some level stressed, okay? Because cholesterol is the precursor to cortisol, and we have to have cholesterol to produce any of the steroidal hormones in our body. So if cholesterol goes up, it's not correlated saying you're going to have heart disease. I won't go into a cholesterol talk right now. We'll talk about that at a different time. But it's telling us that there's something happening. Same thing with TSH. TSH being high doesn't mean you have a thyroid problem because it's not produced from your thyroid. It just tells us that something is off and we want to figure out. It's when the investigation starts, we want to figure out why. So here is the process of the thyroid. All right. Has anybody actually... Raise your hand if, if you really looked into how does your thyroid, how does the thyroid work and how does the body produce this whole, whole process? It's re really cool, actually. So our hypothalamus, that's the, the brain, right? Up in our brain, our hypothalamus produces something from a signal, and we'll get to that signal here in a second, but produces something called TRH, or thyroid uh, regulating hormone, and that goes to the pituitary. Okay, and that pituitary, anterior pituitary now, because of that stimulation, produces thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH. TSH now goes to the cells of the thyroid, which have iodine and which have um, sodium and things like that in there. And those now they produce T3, T4 and some T3. That's, and I'll talk about what T3 and T4 are here in a little bit. And they produce, because of the stimulation, it produces into the, into the body T4 and T3. T4 has converted many times to T3. And that is what our body uses for its metabolism and all the things we talked about in the beginning. Now, from there, that T3 now has to come up, right? That T3 now has to go from here. And the T4 being high will tell the hypothalamus to lo no longer produce the TRH. It's kind of a closed negative loop system, okay? And so then if the TSH isn't high, right, if it's not a thyroid hormone, then why don't we need any other testing? Why can we just say TSH levels are high and that's all we need? But, or TSH levels are normal and that's all we need. And, but the problem is we're still depressed. We still overweight. We still have all these uh, other different things. It doesn't matter what you eat. This is kind of what the doctor is telling me. It doesn't matter what you eat. Different supplements won't help. This is what you have to deal with forever. You're fine. Has anybody heard that you're fine, your TSH is normal? And it's really frustrating with someone with a thyroid issue because they don't feel normal. I've had the patients that come in with this is like, something's not right, but the doctor keeps telling me it's fine. I don't want to live on medications anymore. So here's what they do. Thyroid's off. They give us, give you something called libothyroxine or Synthroid. Those are your two main medications when your TSH levels are high. Okay. And the idea is Levothyroxine and Synthroid, I'll kind of go through what they are first, are a synthetic version of T4. Okay, remember T4 being high tells your hypothalamus to turn off TSH, right? And so that synthetic level tells you that and it says, okay, well, that's fine. TSH now levels come down. We're going to get to here in a little bit why that might not be a good idea and why some of the reasons we see these side effects here with Synthroid, like irregular heartbeat right? Or chest pains or muscle weakness, nervousness, irritability, all these symptoms right here come from a synthetic release of T4 if you don't actually need that. Very important to understand, even if it makes your TSH levels look normal on the chart. 26 million prescriptions each month of this stuff, right? We have a thyroid literally epidemic. At the end of this webinar, you're going to find out why we have a thyroid epidemic. It's going to blow your mind of all the things that are affecting and causing damage to our thyroid. So let's go back here. So this is from the uh, Livothyroxine website. So this is literally the medications website. And Livothyroxine is, a, is the, um, the generic version of Synthroid, okay? And so here, here's what it says. This is really important. Before anyone takes Livothyroxine or Synthroid, these three things need to be looked at. Number one, they have to look at, so it says Livothyroxine's contraindication in patients with untreated subclinical, okay? TSH levels with normal T3 and T4 levels. So if they just test your TH3 levels and they medicate you, they've done a halfway job. They never actually look to see if it could be a contraindication, 
And a good majority of the tests I see coming in just have TSH or maybe a little bit of T3. Okay. The next is in patients with acute myocardial infarctions. People who have had a heart attack before. You don't know how many patients I've seen come in that are on these thyroid medications and they've had a heart attack. And why would, now, why would we not want to stimulate the thyroid or why would we not want to affect the thyroid in the case of a heart attack? Well, because the thyroid affects our heart rate. It affects blood pressure. It affects all these other areas as well. And so you can actually induce another heart attack. Levothyroxine, get this, this is a big one, is contraindicated in patients with uncorrected adrenal insufficiencies. Meaning, if, you've on, if you're on Synthroid or you're on Levothyroxine and you've never had your adrenal glands tested, your cortisol levels and, and in depth there, then they don't actually know if it was an adrenal issue or if it's a thyroid issue. Here's why this is so important, is that your adrenals produce cortisol, and that tells, a, a signal goes, and that cortisol actually blocks the production of that T3, that conversion to T3, to tell your adrenals to, I'm sorry, to tell your thyroid to come down. So if you live a very stressed lifestyle, whether it's a physical stress in your life, a chemical stress in your life, maybe it's just uh, you, you eat like a mess and, and you have a lot of stress, then your thyroid level should come down because that's a normal uh, fight or flight response in our body. Okay. So if you have thyroid insufficiency, you should be taking Synthroid. And then also this one's big contraindicated patients with hypersensitivity to any inactive ingredients in Synthroid. Now, raise your hand. If you're taking Synthroid or uh, Levothyroxine and your doctor went through the inactive ingredients in that Synthroid to see if you were hypersensitive to those ingredients. I don't think they ever do that. And so the problem is, is there's wheat in there and many people are very, very uh, allergic to wheat and uh, other sensitivities that you may know or not know you have. And they're talking hypersensitivity. That's type one, type two, type three, type four allergic responses in the body. Okay, we test for all those responses, but if you have an allergic response to something in there, you're actually creating more of an immune response in the body. So what I'm getting at here is we've gotta be very careful and realize that we just can't live on this stuff and that they're only doing a halfway job at, at looking at it from the big picture. All right. So the number one reason people are still suffering with thyroid issues, we have more medications given out every year, um, but we still have more people dealing with thyroid issues and, and, and um, feeling like they do from the thyroid issues. It's because the labs are incomplete. So here are six, the six hormones that your thyroid gland produces. Okay. So we got T4, we got thyroxine, we got T3, we got reverse T3, T2 and T1, which you really can't test, and then calcitonin. So we get T4, T3, reverse T3. So right there, those aren't typically tested, but right there we know that Synthroid can't replace all these different, uh, different hormones. So it's already kind of a halfway treatment. Now, if you're taking something like Armour Thyroid or a desiccated thyroid, many times that can be um, effective. That can be effective in terms of treating the symptoms, but it doesn't tell us why you have a thyroid issue. And that's what we want to get into here. All right. So this is a patient that came in. I just want to give you some a more in-depth blood work. So if someone has a thyroid issue, we want to know why. We don't just want to know what their TSH levels are. If you look at this, this over here, okay, this is a thyroid, one of an example of a thyroid panel that we run on patients in our office and to see what's going on with the thyroid. So you can see we're looking at T3 total, T3 free. And I'm going to talk about some of these as we go along. Thyroid peroxidase antibodies. So this particular patient, T TSH was low, but if we just did TSH is low, and uh, we would ultimately look at that and say, okay, let's give them medication for that. And thyroid peroxidase antibodies are high and thyroglobulin antibodies are high. Those is an extreme, he's got an extreme autoimmune response. So he doesn't actually have a thyroid issue at all, although all his thyroid hormones are messed up. He has an immune system issue. He has an extremely overactive immune system. And for him, that overactive immune system wasn't his body just saying, oh, the thyroid, I don't like that thyroid. I just want to kill it. Our body doesn't mess up. Our body isn't going to say, I just want to take cells out. If you're someone dealing with an autoimmune disease, your body's not just attacking itself. It's, it's looking at the body and saying, okay, there's something there in that cell that is a foreign object that I want to get rid of. It could be a virus. It could be uh, chemicals like mercury. It could be heavy metals. There's a lot of things that can cause this autoimmune response in our world today. For him, now if somebody has this autoimmune response, 
I'm not going to go in and say, okay, let's try to get these numbers changed. These numbers are just a big picture of what's happening in his body. If we go in and just synthetically alter them with, with medications and things like that, it's going to do them no good in the long run. I want to find out why. First question is why we do a stool test. This is a picture of a portion of a gut actual test, three samples of stool, and they take, send it to a lab and the lab gives us back all kinds of information from that stool for him. He had a lot going on in his stool test, but this one I put up here for you to see, he has two parasites. So this guy is a dancer and he travels all over the world, dancing and teaching dance and, and performing and all these things. And he came in, lost tons of weight. His eyes were poking out of his head, exhausted, and just couldn't, couldn't sleep. His heart's racing out of his chest. And he's got a hush. He's got, he's got um, Graves' disease. He's actually in a hyperthyroid place. Now we can treat the hyperthyroid with a medication, but it doesn't tell us anything. He's got parasites, which are draining his system and kicking his body into an autoimmune response. For this particular patient, we went through and healed his gut did all the digestive system work that we need to with certain supplements, certain things to help calm those parasites down. We did a parasite cleanse and he, and he's come back. All his symptoms have gone away. His numbers are way, way down. So he's still, look, he had uh, 4,637 for his thyroid peroxidase antibodies. Now you might not know what that means yet. Bear with me. I'm going to teach you what that means and why it's so important, but his numbers now are down in the, I think it's like 15 or 20. So it's still there, but it's calmed down. Okay. And so that's very important because now we actually know why he has this process. And, but then his body's susceptible for this to happen again. So he's got to follow everything we've taught him um, in terms of eating and, and lifestyle changes continually after he gets better. Now I have a picture of the brain here because the thyroid, I, this is an example of this, and this is a big picture of it. Okay. This is an example of the fact that a thyroid problem is almost never the primary issue. Let me just say that again. The thyroid is almost never a primary issue. When someone comes in and says, I have a thyroid problem, my mind immediately goes to why. And that primary issue could be, and we're going to talk about it, it could be a brain issue, right? It could be the fact that maybe the brain has something happening in the pituitary or the hypothalamus area that's overstimulating or understimulating the thyroid, right? That could be a possibility. Maybe it's a liver issue. Now, how can we tell if it's a liver issue or maybe it's a male or female organ issue and there's too much testosterone or too low of testosterone or too high of estrogens? Well, we can test. So some of the more in-depth testing is we look at not just TSH, not just T3 and, and T4 that sometimes they'll look at, but we look at something called your thyroid binding globulin. Okay, guys. So I'm going to go through some of the stuff we look at to tell why you actually have a thyroid issue, because if we can figure out why, then we can actually get to the, we can get to the root cause and get your life back on track. So thyroid binding globulin, the thyroid binding globulin, it's a fun word, I know, but that is a transport system for T4 and T3. And it converts, helps the, it's in the pro it's, it's where the conversion of much of the T4 to T3 happens. Now T3 is how our body produces, uh, how our body, what our body uses, I'm sorry to for much of the metabolism and everything else. If you look over here, it's made in your liver. Okay. So if this is made in your liver and it's the essential part of the conversion of your thyroid hormones, do you think it's a good idea that we check your liver as well? Right. And so we're going to get to this. And you're going to realize that a thyroid problem is never the primary issue. And there's almost no hormonal problem in our body that is ever the primary issue. Let me just say that again. This is hard for people to grasp, but thyroids, I mean, sorry, hormones are just transport. It's, it's systems that are going through our body, chemicals that are going through our body, telling our body to do things. If they're off, there's an underlying reason for that. And so the liver is a big part of that. 25% saturation is normal for this thyroid binding globulin in terms of the T4, T3. If you have high estrogen or birth control or hormone replacement therapy can increase this and cause thyroid problems, low testosterone. So for men and for women, having too low of testosterone can actually lead to that thyroid issue as well, the thyroid binding globulin. Okay. So the other thing we have to look at when we're looking at your thyroid is you want to know what your adrenal glands are doing. We want to see what your cortisol levels are doing and just blood work on cortisol. 
It's not a full picture of the adrenals, but it's enough for us to actually say, okay, at least we know you're producing it and um, that, that, that you're able to, you know, if you need to take a medication or whatnot, but also if you're, we can tell if it's fatigued by the blood work. And then there's other more in-depth tests we do. I'll show you in a second. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it, first of all, cortisol lowers your TSH levels. So if cortisol goes up, TSH goes down through the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. They all work together. It's one big system. You can't have a thyroid issue. You typically won't have a thyroid issue without an adrenal issue. Blocks the conversion of T4 to T3. That is, the T3 is what our body uses for most of the metabolism. So it has to convert from T4 to T3. It's higher in the morning and lower in the PM. And so ultimately, if your cortisol is high, your brain, your body, I'm sorry, actually has a, a system that says we can't raise thyroid right now because if we do, we will have an aortic aneurysm. There's too much pressure. The heart rate will go up and the body can't handle that. Our body is that intelligent that if you're stressed out of your mind, it's going to lower thyroid because it's in survival mode. And survival mode needs cortisol to produce so that you can stay awake and alert and focus. So as you might assume, one of the things I'm going to tell you throughout this work, throughout this webinar is that we have to reduce stress. Not just emotional stress, but physical stress, chemical stress, and emotional stress. So have you ever felt wired, um, anxious, but you're exhausted? Like you, you're in bed, time to go to bed, but you just can't quit thinking? When that's happening, that means your cortisol levels are really high. This is a four-point cortisol test in one of the tests that we do. And the red up here tells you that this person is way up in adrenal function and overstimulated. And that's the reason they're in that place. And it will absolutely lower your TSH levels and it will absolutely lower your thyroid function. Over here, I know I'm getting into some tests here, but I know you guys are smart and I know you can track with me. If you're not tracking with me, please tell me. Uh, if you are, give me a high five throughout this thing and let me know you're tracking with me. Uh, sometimes I get a little too heady. All the red here in the cortisol pattern, this person is in adrenal sufficient uh, deficiency, meaning they are not producing cortisol anymore. Are barely producing it. You put this person on a uh, levothyroxine, that is a contraindication. That's something that should never happen. But how many times has your doctor, again, with TSH and uh, levothyroxine ever tested this in depth into your um, adrenals? Okay, thyroid antibodies. This is one of my favorite things to test for someone with a thyroid issue. We have had so many aha moments for patients with this test right here. And it's it, it's part of the panel that we do, but it's looking to see if there's an autoimmune response causing the thyroid problem, okay? And we're looking at something called TPO or thyroid peroxidase antibodies, okay? As we go through this, thyroid peroxidase is something that your body uses to convert, right? It converts T4 to T3. If you have thyroid, uh, thyroid uh, antibodies, peroxidase antibodies, then your body's not going to be able to produce or very sluggish in producing, depending on how much there are, are, are converting T4 to T3. So you'll follow me there. So you actually can't convert T4 to T3. So if I give you a synthetic version of T4, right, synthroid, but you have an autoimmune response, we're just pumping this synthetic version of T4 that can't actually be converted. Same thing with thyroid globulin antibodies as well. It's part of that conversion process. Very important. So this is autoimmune thyroiditis. It can be Hashimoto's if it's along with low thyroid hormones on the other end, or it can be Graves disease if there's too much of the thyroid hormones. Reverse T3. This is something I've rarely seen tested uh, along with the thyroid, but it tells us a whole lot. Reverse T3, if those levels are high, it will actually block your body's ability to, your, your the, the receptors on your cells to be able to... Um, uh, uh, for able for the T3 to bind to those receptors. Remember, every cell in our body needs this to, this T3 to, for the actual metabolism and the other things we talked about in the beginning. If it can't bind to it, you're not going to get there. So you could have all these thyroid symptoms, have normal TSH levels, but then we look and say, hey, reverse T3 is really high. What causes reverse T3 to be high? Increases in times of physical and mental stress. Maybe you're exercising your tail off way too much. Right? Maybe you're physically stressed because you're staring at a computer screen all day long. Maybe you had a car accident. Maybe you're emotionally stressed and you just have so much going on in your life that it's actually affecting and causing 
reverse T3 to cr be created and blocking the conversion to T3 and blocking the binding sites. So now you're having all these symptoms of hypothyroidism, but you're going to the doctor and TSH seems fine. Pretty crazy. So this is one, that's another one of my favorite things to test that it tells us a lot for the patient. Ferritin levels. Another big part of it is iron. Low iron impacts your thyroid peroxidase activity. That is actually your body's ability to convert T4 to T3. So someone with low iron issues many times or most of the time will have a, um, actually have a thyroid issue as well. So this is all part of the panel process. The final thing we test, I don't have on here, is vitamin D3. Now, the reason I've tested vitamin D3, because it's one of the, it's so many studies that have shown how effective increasing vitamin D3 levels can be, or how ineffective if you have low D3 levels, how that can call, create or be a big player in many of the autoimmune responses that we see. Okay. And then finally, you can take a picture of this. I'm not going to go through each one of them, but these are different medications. What if the medication you're taking is causing the thyroid issue, and now we're giving you a thyroid medication to, uh, to help with it, and we're just kind of beaten at both doors, right? So these different medications can actually affect and cause negative issues to the thyroid. Okay. So when you go and get your thyroid tested, one question for you is what do your labs look like? Most patients that come in have TSH for sure. That's always there. Sometimes they have T4 and free T3. And, but that's really it. What I want to see is all of this plus your hormones, right? Estrogen and, and testosterone and everything else. And plus all the immune factors in the body as well. And then I can actually say, okay, now we can start thinking about why you have a thyroid issue based on what this tells us. Meaning if you have an autoimmune response, we go and look at the digestive system and the immune system. All right. So to take a little pause here, I just went through a whole lot. Okay. Hopefully you're tracking with me. Um, I know it's very heady. And uh, hopefully it, it, it helps you. Now, this is the process we would take with someone, right? So we go through and we say, okay, we did the testing. We figured out what's happening. If everything I just went through right there was like, okay, I need to have this tested properly. I've never had any of this testing doing. This is how we do it, okay? We're kind of halfway through here. This is how we do it. We test and then we sit down and we figure out a protocol. And this is what our protocol looks like. This is an example of a protocol, okay? And this is lab review, nutrition, uh, following certain diets or eating plans based on it and different consults and things like that. This is the timeline. We're looking to reduce inflammation. We're looking to repair the body, detox, rebuild, and support, support hormones, hormones, and then retest in the system. Okay. If you're uh, right now, if you've even had that and you want that, part of what we're doing tonight is giving you opportunities to do those things. So I'm going to post. I'm broadcasting right now. So on, in the uh, chats, just click the link that I just put on there. And literally, that's a sign up now. And what we're doing is a 15 minute um, complimentary 15 minute phone consult. I just sit down, I just get on the phone, talk to you and see if some of these things are things we can help you with. Some of the things you're dealing with are things we can help you with. If you're listening and you're like, hey, that's me, click that, sign up for it. I only have a few spots. I think we gave three days for this um, because we're doing it for free, complimentary. Uh, we could only do so much. I told you I have a baby coming. So I have a little bit of time, but I want to make sure that you're getting access to this stuff and, and really understanding um, individualized. One of the things I, I can tell you as I go through everything here is it's really hard to, to, to go through stuff like this for a big group because it has to be individualized. And that's where the testing actually comes in. Okay. So I'll click on that and you can book there. I'm going to continue on. Now, this is what leads me to the big picture. Okay, guys, I just skimmed through a lot of thyroid stuff and I know that was heady and everything else, but this is the fun stuff. Okay. So we go to a doctor for an endocrine system, right? The thyroid's a part of the endocrine system. We go to our doctor and he gives us um, a medication. He tests our thyroid, right? An endocrinologist. But what about all these other organ systems? The reality is, is the body does not, is not systems. That is not one system. And if you start to affect one system like the thyroid, you're going to have side effects on everything else. We have to look at the body from the big picture here. Okay. We have to look at all the systems to figure out why. Again, the thyroid is almost always secondary, tertiary, whatever. It's not usually the primary problem, even though it's what we feel is causing most of our symptoms. Okay. So this is how our human body works. All these systems works together. The brain and the spinal cord control everything. Now, the medical approach real quick is, again, TSH. 
integrative approach. If you go more integrative, more natural, they're going to do TSA testing, T4, T3, uh, T4 free, and then T3 total. Our approach, we call it the CSI approach. The, the wellness way is this right here. Why, what caused it, and how do I fix it? That's it. It's in-depth evaluation. We're not here to just put out fires like the firefighter. We're here to actually restore your body. The thing is this, guys, is that if your body is, uh, uh, is adapting, if it's in homeostasis and imbalance, right, your thyroid is going to work properly. Every organ tissue you sell in your body will work properly if we can get your body back to balance. The first step is testing. The second step is now how do we restore the balance? So here's four questions you must ask yourself about your thyroid. Number one, is it producing? Am I making enough of the hormones that I need? Number two, are those hormones converting? Am I able to convert T4 to T3? Uh, number three, is there something destructing it, destroying it, okay? Like an autoimmune response. And then finally, is there something interfering with it? This is how we get down to the root cause. It's Remember, the questions that we ask will give us the answers that, that are really productive and that we want. So what's triggering it? the problem, what's actually causing this problem. So I want you guys to take a picture of this. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because it's, it's, it's a lot, but this is the factors that affect your thyroid. Okay. And you can see over here on the top, right factors that inhibit proper production of thyroid hormones. This is to tell whether or not you're producing or converging. These are the questions, you know, things you want to look at. Now I'm not saying you see here, I have vitamin A, um, zinc, uh, things like that. I'm, uh, you see selenium, you see iron, you see glutathione. I'm not saying get off of here and go buy those supplements. We want to find out if your body is deficient in those. And if you need them, yes, but don't just go take them. But this is a big picture of the things that, that are going to affect the thyroid. So take a picture of that and you can zero in on that uh, in the future. Now, this is another big thing. A lot of doctors will tell you that thyroid, uh, that, that your diet doesn't matter. Now, I actually had a patient in our office that, that has, was constipated for 20 years and she goes to these doctors and they keep telling her it's just because you're getting older it's getting worse because you're getting older your diet doesn't matter it's not going to change anything there's no way and, and multiple different medical doctors told her this and blew my mind i think it's the craziest thing i've ever heard but uh we started giving her care and guess what happens she starts using the restroom every single day so clearly there was something she could do about it and it wasn't just because she's getting old Diet is a very important part. It's not the only part, but it is a very important part. To produce any of the things we've been talking about, T3, reverse T3 or T4, you have to have tyrosine and you have to have iodine to do that. T4 is tyrosine with four iodines. T3 is tyrosine with three iodines. So if you don't have them, you can't actually produce the hormones that you need. Again, I'm not saying go and take iodine right now. We need to see if that's what you need. But many times that can be the problem. Tyrosine. I don't typically supplement for that. I just say we need to eat uh, more meat. Meat is a big part of that. Cheeses, things like that. Um, a lot of patients that are full vegan will have, uh, it's very common that they'll have thyroid issues because not enough tyrosine. Okay. Iodine obviously is a big part of it. And deficiency, the thyroid hormones can't be produced, right? It can also lead to goiters. One of the ways we can check the thyroid very simply to see if there is a problem is an x-ray. So in our office, we do spinal x-rays and when you look from the side in an x-ray, you can actually see right here, the thyroid's right here. If I can see white dots or white thickness on that thyroid, that means it's calcified. And typically it's a deficiency in iodine, but it could be autoimmune issues. It could be lots of other things. So one of the things we'll do is actually x-rays too, to get a preliminary look at what the uh, thyroid's doing. Okay. So here's some areas you can get seafood or you might need to actually supplement for it. Again, don't just get off here and go get iodine. That might not be right for you. And it can actually cause negative. There's a huge war right now on whether or not everyone with a thyroid issue should take iodine. I believe that we need to test and find out, not just go uh, shooting in the dark. Question number three, and this is the one that I think is causing most, or I've seen is causing most people's thyroid issues. Uh, and it is autoimmune diseases, the leading cause of death in most young uh, middle-aged women. And it's actually building up in men as well. And it's this, the immune system responding and taking out uh, body cells because of foreign objects like like viruses from bacteria from um, uh, uh, heavy metals and things like that the body is actually seemingly taking itself out in other words 
and it can destroy the thyroid and cause a ton of health issues. If you're someone with a, uh, an autoimmune response, right? The reason it's so important that we uh, figure it out, right? Your TSH levels might be normal. Uh, I think I have a patient through here actually that their TSH normal, no, no, uh, excuse me, levels are normal, but they have all these antibodies. Well, they're likely to get way worse soon if we don't address it and your body's likely to have other autoimmune response happening, okay? So the thyroid TPO antibodies and the thyroid globin antibodies are two big things to look at if you're having symptoms of thyroid issues. Here is a test of this right here. And uh, this is a before and after test of a patient that came in a while back. But we got thyroid antibodies, proxase at 252, and we're able to get them down to 143. Every doctor I've been, and that's at a very short period of time. Every doctor I've ever heard speak on this, medical doctors specifically will tell you, you cannot reverse an autoimmune disease. You cannot reverse Hashimoto's or Graves. That's not true. And I'll tell you, it's not true straightforward, not because I'm on a webinar and I just want to tell you that because I've seen it over and over and over again. And look at this. He has low ferritin. They had low ferritin levels as well. Um, it's just about doing the right things to support the immune system, to keep it from being hyperactive. If you have an autoimmune response, your very first question is saying is, is this, is why is my body creating this overactive immune response? There's an answer to it. I promise you, you weren't born with just a body that wants to fight itself. There's something creating that response. And we have to keep investigating to figure out here's some of the main reasons your body will do that or some of the main reasons you're going to have thyroid issues. Interference, okay? It's interference to your body's ability to heal. It could be da damage to the spinal cord, damage to the spine, which is part of our care that we do many times with patients, not all the time, but many times it's chiropractic care. And um, I've had patients that can't use the restroom and we just start adjusting them and they start using the restroom or they've had thyroid, is thyroid issues and the chiropractic portion made the biggest difference. But again, we want to look in depth. It could be nutrition, stress, Heavy metals are big ones, molds and biotoxins. Those are always the hardest ones because you have to really investigate your past, investigate your home and your environment. Very common with teachers is biotoxins and mold because of the schools. Uh, food allergies, so foods that you're eating. I recommend everyone has a food allergy test to know that uh, what you should be eating. Viral load. Now, I'm going to talk about that here in a second, uh, how important and, and very rare does anybody look at this in the, in the world, in the, in the healthcare world, but it has made a big difference when we look at this. And then digestive problems. I think that is probably one of the biggest ones is the GI tract issues. We all have kind of messed up GI tracts. All right. So this is kind of the fun part here. This is where I'm going to go through what do you avoid in your world to prevent thyroid issues for you and your kids and family? And what could have caused in the first place? So we got the iodine halogen uh, department of the periodic table. I'm taking you back to high school and your periodic table or college, whichever it is for you. But the, the high, um, the halogen, uh, area of that is you have fluoride, you have chlorine, you have bromine, and you have iodine. Well, the deal is, is guys, is that iodine goes is puts in the cells of your thyroid along with sodium. So sodium is very important. You need to actually have salt, believe it or not. And iodine goes into the thyroid but the problem is, is so does fluoride, so does chlorine, so does bromelain. They all actually attach to those receptors as well and cause it to where your body is deficient and cause that autoimmune disease because of it. Now, let's look at this. Where do we get fluoride? Well, it causes the stuff on your teeth, right? Well, sorry, I have it behind here as well. But toothpaste, you go to your dentist. I, hey, if your dentist says the fluoride is good for you, he has never looked, gone into a chemistry lab. And he, I, I can just tell you right now, he doesn't know. It's, it's no different than everything else in, in healthcare right now is we're trying to separate everything. You don't just have teeth and you can't just treat teeth. Okay. If you put thyroid in your body or fluoride, fluoride in your body, it's going to cause a slew of issues. A lot of the wines that we drink have a lot of fluoride as pesticides, um, Teflon pans, and a lot of the different um, uh, toothpastes, fluorides. So I highly recommend is taking fluoride completely out. You don't need it, and it definitely causes health issues. And we know that because it affects the thyroid, it affects the liver, it affects your gut, it kills all the good bacteria in the gut as well. So bromine, this is a big one. And sorry, guys, uh, I had to shift for this new setup. So this is something I learned today. Uh, I had to shift from my PowerPoint to, I've turned this to a PDF, and so I forgot about this part. So behind there, it also talks about bromine being in breads, very common. They used to have actually iodine in breads. They shift to bromine. Bromine's in pools and hot tubs. It's in a lot of our carpet, carpets, upholsteries, and new products. Um, it's in a lot of different things. Bromine will destroy the thyroid over time. Mountain Dew, all these different sodas, 
um, sun drop, all of those things are full of bromine. So read your ingredients list and start to reduce um, the, you know, the, the stuff that has this, it has this in there. Chlorine, obviously house water, huge in our house water right now. I'm out over in Union County and they, uh, they just sense the thing that they're increased all this chloramines and everything else in their water. And they say, oh, it's hundred percent safe. Guys, it's not hundred percent safe. When you start trusting that we're going to be in trouble. Um, house water, drinking water, swimming pools, chlorine can have a big effect on the thyroid as well. It'll act as iodine and it destroys our gut. Now this is, I said the smoking tooth video. If you want to take a picture of this, you can go watch this online, but it ultimately is, um, talking about the amalgam fillings, mercury, is a big part of amalgam fillings and it fumes into our body. And one of the major organs it has a negative impact on is our brain, but also on our thyroid, right? Thyroid hormones right here on PubMed, thyroid hormones in relation to lead, mercury, and cadmium exposure in the National Health and Con uh, Nutrition Examination Survey. They showed that negative association observed between mercury and thyroid levels are consistent with proposed mechanisms for, high, uh, for mercury toxicity but yet we're putting them in our mouth. So obviously don't do, that, don't do that if you haven't done it yet, but a lot of times removing amalgam fillings the proper way, going to a good dentist that can do that makes a really big difference. Uh, it really does. For me, I know it made a huge difference for brain fog and things like that uh, and anxiety when I got mine removed. Now, selenium also is affected by mercury. I didn't talk about this, but selenium and glutathione, glutathione is our body's strongest antioxidant, are needed for that con part of that conversion from T4 to T3. So mercury can actually, even if you're taking selenium, can actually alter that conversion process. Now, this one is the one that almost no one thinks about, is the old viruses you've had. If you've had Epstein-Barr mono, um, if you've had herpes, uh, there's a bunch of different types. Different viruses actually lay dormant in our body. And when our body is weakened, whether it's from a tons of physical and emotional stress, whether it's chemical stress, whether it's whatever it is in our life and our immune system is weakened, we're high stress, uh, these viruses actually will come out and it's a constant infection. Your body's always having to fight them off. And that's why they're related to cancers and other immune system issues. One of the major things we'll see with thyroid problems is a virus load like this. It'll create that autoimmune response not just with thyroid, that can be for uh, 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 heart issues, other issues as well. Digestive problems can stem from this, cancers can stem from this. So this right here is a viral panel. We actually will test more in depth viruses, see if viruses are causing it. And again, I'm showing you so much and so many different things because everybody is different. It's rarely is it the same person for same thing for everybody. I wish I could put like a, here's the protocol, everybody do it out there, but it just wouldn't work. And it doesn't work when people do that. It works for some, but the majority are left um, kind of without it. It could be a leaky gut issue. These are x-rays. So again, I said, we take x-rays in our office. One, I want to see the spine and the nervous system because it runs the body. And we've seen such great results with correcting the spine, but also all this bubble wrap looking stuff, that is a ton of inflammation in that person's GI tract. And Typically, that means they either have yeast, bacterial infections, parasites, or and or um, food allergies. Okay, and this is what a food allergy list looks like. Okay, and these red things, I've seen so many awesome things happen with skin issues, thyroid issues when people stop taking their uh, food allergies. Excuse me. When people start getting stop taking their or eating their food allergies, it makes a huge difference. Um, I've had people with psoriasis their whole life and within two weeks of taking these things out, uh, the psoriasis goes away. Uh, for me personally, my personal story with food allergies and why I'm, I'm, I'm so excited about them is when I did my food allergy testing, I had about 20 different food allergies. I had been eating anti-inflammatory, ridiculously clean for about 12 years, uh, exercising, taking tons of different good supplements, all the things I looked at, but I've had psoriasis and you can see I don't have it anymore on my elbow, but it was all around my arm and I even get my scalp. And uh, I couldn't get rid of it. I tried everything. And it wasn't until I took the food allergies out and got my gut healed up that uh, it went away. Okay. So it can be, it, it's an immune, it's an immune response that we we're trying to address here. That's a constant infection with food allergies. Okay. So guys, there's so much again to go through and I probably went through too much, but you live and learn. And today I, more than anything is what I want is for you to take action on it and, I, and, and make a, make a change. And say, okay, I'm not just going to take the medication and be okay with that. I'm not just going to take my doctor's advice and say, you know, what I eat doesn't matter. 
but start looking at the whole world around you, whether it's your house, whether it's the, the food you're eating, your environment. But then at the same time, um, following, getting with someone that's going to give you a protocol. And that's, that's what we do is we, we help figure out what is, what is it for you? What is your protocol that you need? The first step in doing that is getting testing, seeing what, what, what's happening in your body. And so we do that through um, this first call, right? The first call that we do is from this webinar. Now, if you're a patient and you're on here right now, when you come into our office and maybe we you came in for, maybe it was back pain, maybe you came in for digestive problems and we haven't done a full thyroid evaluation yet, just let us know you want that. Tell us at the front when you come in and we'll get you set for that as well. Um, if you're not a patient, this part right here is for you. That's the complimentary 15 minute phone consult. And it's either myself or one of our team members jumping on a call with you and seeing if we're going to be able to help kind of a get to know you visit. I know that something like a webinar is not something easy to just say, uh, you know, I want to commit to coming in and doing this and paying, paying money for something yet. But um, if you got on here, I know that you want help and uh, we're here to help you. And I know we can make that happen for you. And so that calls to see what the possibilities are. If you have any past testing, you'll be able to, we'll be able to go through that on the call. And if you have any past things that you've tried, we'll go through that as well. Okay. So again, over in the, the uh, chat section is the sign up now. Simply click on that, sign up, and that takes you through, uh, gets you to that consult. You pick a time. We only have, I think, three days that I set up for this. Um, and then I'll tell you what testing you need. I'll tell you if it, I think it's going to be beneficial for you um, or not. So it's kind of a, a good get to know you visit. And then from there, it might be a thyroid panel. It might be a stool test. It might be food allergy testing. Um, it might be coming in for a full exam and evaluation and uh, nervous system evaluation. It just really depends on what that is for you. Okay. If you're listening right now, maybe this, you've been watching this for a family member and you want to get them set for that. Um, we honor that for them as well. Okay. All right, guys. So we made it less than an hour. Uh, I hope you got a lot out of that and uh, please leave comments and let me know if, um, if, if you tracked with me the whole, excuse me, the whole way. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to put those in the comments as well. And for today, I, uh, I probably might not get back to you for tonight, but um, we we'll definitely will eventually uh, get back to you and try to make that good for you. Cool. All right, you guys have an amazing evening. And I'll leave the, uh, if you go into the chats again, I'll leave that offer there for you. Um, and you can, you can click on that whenever you would like. Let me just see, make sure it's there. Cool. Yep. So you just, yep. You sign up for that and then we um, go from there. All right. Good to talk to you guys tonight and have an awesome day. And uh, we'll talk to you next time and, and go from there.